So people always ask me, they say, why is it that you're working out so hard? Five hours a day, six hours a day, and you have always a smile on your face. The others are working out just as hard as you do, and they look sour in the face. Why is that? And I told people all the time, I said, because to me, I am shooting for gold. In front of me is the Mr. Universe title. So every rep that I do gets me closer to accomplishing that goal, to make this goal, this vision turn into reality. So I couldn't wait to do another 500 pound squat. I couldn't wait to do another 500 pound bench press. I couldn't wait to do another 2000 reps of sit-ups. I couldn't wait for the next exercise. If you don't have a vision of where you go and if you don't have a goal where you go, you drift around and you never end up anywhere. My whole life, I had this unusual talent that I could see things very clearly in front of me. If I can see it, then it must be achievable. The first rule of success is to have a vision. It's like you can have the best ship in the world, you can have the best airplane in the world. If the pilot or the captain doesn't know where to go, it would just drift around. It would not end up anywhere or most likely in the wrong place. So I was very fortunate that I stumbled onto my vision. I felt that I was born for something special, for something unique, for something big. This is the blueprint for my life. This is exactly what I want to do. I want to become a bodybuilding champion. I want to get into movies and I want to make millions of dollars and be rich and famous. Do you know how great it felt that I knew where I was going? Imagine the majority of people don't know where they're going. I knew where I was going, that I'm going to become this bodybuilding champion. So it was just a question of how do you do it? I was so relieved because when you have a goal, when you have a vision, everything becomes easy. I felt so blessed that I knew what I was doing. It's like a medical student that studies and knows he wants to become a doctor. You know where to go. So I knew where to go. So people always ask me, when they saw me in the gym in the pumping iron days, they said, why is it that you're working out so hard, five hours a day, six hours a day, and you have always a smile on your face? The others are working out just as hard as you do, and they look sour in the face. Why is that? And I told people all the time, I said, because to me, I'm shooting for a goal in front of Mr. Universe title. So every rep that I do gets me closer to accomplishing that goal, to make this goal, this vision turn into reality. Every single set that I do, every repetition, every weight that I lift will get me a step closer to turn this goal into reality. So I couldn't wait to do another 500 pound squat. I couldn't wait to do another 500 pound bench press. I couldn't wait to do another 2000 reps of sit-ups. I couldn't wait for the next exercise. I felt so great knowing where I was going and I tell you it worked. I mean, think about it. And the end, I was just not visualizing just my exercise, but I was really lifting the trophy over my head. That's what I was thinking about. And with the age of 20, I went to London and I won the Mr. Universe contest as the youngest Mr. Universe ever. And it was because I had a goal. And this is no different than anything else, what I'm talking about. This is not just about bodybuilding. It was the same in acting. I remember when I was doing Conan the Barbarian, I was crawling on the rocks with a sword in my arm, crawling on all four. So after 10 takes, my elbows were bleeding and my knees were bleeding. And the director came to me and he said, Arnold, I'm so sorry that you have to go through this, but we need one more take, a close up of you crawling with the sword towards the camera. Can you handle one more take? And I said to him, I don't know what you're talking about. This is, I'm totally fine. He says, but you're bleeding. I said, because I don't feel it because I can visualize what the scene will look like in a film. And I'm so excited about this scene. And so I had this in my mind. And so this is why it didn't matter if I had to do another 50 takes or a hundred takes, no matter how much I bleed on my elbows or my knees, I saw that vision of the perfect scene and it was an important scene and I would do it over and over again until we got it. So let me tell you something, visualizing your goal and going after it makes it fun. You got to have a purpose no matter what you do in life. You got to have a purpose. So that's rule number one, have a vision. Rule number two is don't listen to the naysayers. 
Don't listen to the naysayers. Everything I ever did, the thing that I heard out of people's mouth was, that's impossible. It can't be done. Or no. I remember when I want to be a bodybuilding champion, including my parents and everyone else around me, said this is impossible. When I become a ski champion, that's what they do in Austria. Or a bicycle champion to do some track and field. You can't be a bodybuilding champion. That is exactly what I heard. And of course, I proved to the people that it can't be done. So whenever someone said to me, it can't be done, I heard it can be done. When they said no, I heard yes. And when they said it's impossible, I heard it is possible. I'm a strong believer of what Nelson Mandela said, that everything is always impossible until someone does it. Well, I'm gonna be the one, I said to myself, I'm gonna do it and I'm gonna show it to them. Maybe it has never been done before. That's perfectly fine with me, but I'm gonna do it. And I did not listen to the naysayers. When I wanted to come to America, they said it's impossible. There's no money that you have to fly even over there. You have no money when you go over there to live with. And what do you think, they're gonna wait for you? They have plenty of big bodybuilders over there. It was all no, no, and it can't be done, it's impossible. And I remember then that the same thing happened also when I went into show business. Can you imagine I was now a bodybuilder, I weighed 250 pounds, I was Mr. Olympia six times, and now I said to the agent, I want to get into movies. He said, ha, 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 that's funny, Arnold. I asked a studio executive, I say, I want to get into movies. I want to be a leading man. He started laughing. So they all say it's impossible. I said, why is it impossible? He says, because Look at how big you are. You weigh 250 pounds. So therefore, forget about it. And then they told me this, and your accent, even if you reduce all your body weight and everything and have a normal body, your accent. I said, your accent, I mean, it will give people goosebumps with the German accent. It will get people the creeps. They will get scared. He says, no one in Hollywood ever has become a leading man that had an accent. Doesn't happen. People in America want to hear their actors talk like John Wayne or like Burt Reynolds or like Clint Eastwood. That's the kind of stuff that they heard. They said, no, you see, it's impossible. And plus your name, your name, who can pronounce Schwarzen Schnitzel or something like that? No one can pronounce it, so forget about it, Arnold. This is the kind of thing that I heard. Imagine. You go from studio executive to studio executive, from agent to agent, from manager to manager, and they all said exactly the same thing. Now that's very encouraging, isn't it? But you know something? I didn't give a shit. I didn't. Because I believed that I can be a leading man. I believed that I could be another Clint Eastwood or another Burt Reynolds. I believe that it could be those people. I said, there's enough room on that ladder that I can fit up there. And I looked back again and learned from what I learned in sports. In my case, in bodybuilding. It's all about the hard work that you put in. I said to myself, in bodybuilding, I worked out five, six hours a day. I'm gonna do the same thing now for acting. And of course, I went to college to study English. I studied the said voice, accent removal, acting classes, and all of this stuff. All day long, I worked and I worked and I worked. And within a short period of time, I made one movie called Hercules in New York, which of course went right into the toilet. But it didn't discourage me. I still had the same vision. And then all of a sudden, I did Streets of San Francisco. I did Stay Hungry and Pumping Iron and the villain, and then all of a sudden, I was asked by Dino De Laurentiis and by Universal Studio, the biggest studio, to star in Conan the Barbarian.
after I did Conan the Barbarian, the director at the press conference said, he said to the press, if we wouldn't have had Arnold, we would have had to build one. So think about that. The very body that they said can never be sold because the time is wrong. A few years later, I'm doing Conan the Barbarian and it was the number one hit at the box office when it came out in the summer of 82. Think about that. And the director says, if we wouldn't have had his body, we would have had to build one. So all of a sudden, my body became an asset, not a liability. And the same thing was with Terminator. After we were finished filming Terminator, Jim Cameron said to the press, if Arnold wouldn't have had that accent and talked like a machine, I'll be back. I think the movie wouldn't have worked. So think about that. The body and the accent that they attacked was an asset. But I didn't listen to those losers. I didn't listen to them at all. Because that's exactly the way it was in politics again, when everyone said no, 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 and it can't be done. And then became governor of California. And this is with everything like that. It's just the reality of it is, is that you cannot listen to the naysayers. So this is a very important lesson for all of you. So when someone says, no, this is a stupid idea, you in your mind, you don't have to say it, but in your mind, just say to yourself, fuck you, you're an asshole. What do you know? If I would have listened to the naysayers, from bodybuilding to show business to politics, I would not be standing here today talking to you. I would be in Austria in the Alps yodeling. <laughs> so this is why I say don't listen to the naysayers. The third point that I'm going to make to you is work your ass off. There is no magic bill. There is no magic out there. You cannot get around. You have to work and work and work. And it drives me crazy when people say that they don't have enough time to go to the gym for 45 minutes a day and work out. Or to do something for 45 minutes to an hour a day to improve. If it is physically improve or if it is mentally to improve. Imagine you read one hour a day about history. How much you will learn after 365 hours in one year. Think about if you study about the history of musicians, of composers, how much you would know. Imagine if you would work on the business, on some business that you want to develop every day for an hour. Imagine how further along you will go and get. So it drives me nuts because when people say we don't have the time, we have 24 hours a day. six hours a day so it gives you still 18 hours now there's someone shaking their head out here in front to say probably I don't sleep six hours I sleep eight hours right or just sleep faster so we have 18 hours a day the average person works around eight to ten hours so let's assume it's ten hours so we have eight hours left then you travel around an hour a day maybe two hours a day so now you have still six hours left so what do you do with these six hours what do we do with the six hours? Then we eat a little bit, then we schmooze a little bit, talk a little bit to people and all that stuff. But you can see how much time there is available if you organize your day. So you got to work hard. I mean, let me tell you something. When I went to America, I went to college, I went and worked out five hours a day, and I was working on construction. 
because in those days in bodybuilding, there was no money. I didn't have the money for food supplements or anything. So I had to go to work. So I worked in construction. I went to college. I worked out in the gym and at night from eight o'clock at night to 12 midnight, I went to acting class four times a week. So I did all of that. There was not one single minute that I wasted. And this is why I'm standing here today. I became very friendly with Muhammad Ali in the 70s. And Muhammad Ali worked his butt off. And I saw it firsthand. And I remember that there was a sports writer that was there in the gym when he was working out and he was doing sit-ups. And they asked him, how many sit-ups do you do? And he said, I don't start counting until it hurts. Now think about that. He doesn't start counting his sit-ups until he feels pain. That's when he starts counting. That is working hard. And so you can't get around the hard work. It doesn't matter who it is. As a matter of fact, I believe what uh, Ted Turner said, work like hell and advertise. You get it? Work like hell, go to bed, and early, early to rise, work like hell and advertise. So you work your ass off, and then you let the world know about your work. That's what it is all about. Let people know if you have a company, if you have a movie, if you do a sports, work your ass off, but then advertise and let everyone know. So this is what it's all about. So anyway, so those are the three main rules. Work your ass off. Do it. Do it now.